Remember, if it's weird, if it's paranormal, if it's supernatural, it's in the Y Files. Rendlesham Forest in Suffolk. It was here in December 1980 that a very strange occurrence happened. Some people say a UFO crash landed in the forest literally a few yards behind me. Others say it was a top secret military aircraft that crashed down. Others say a nuclear accident happened that the government attempted to cover up. Either way, it's one of the most talked about stories in British ufology. But what exactly did happen on that cold December night back in 1980? Many witnesses have come forward over the years with their version of the accounts of what actually happened. And they do seem to differ. So what do we make of the whole story? Well, in this edition of The Y Files, we're going to attempt to find out exactly what did happen on that night. We'll talk to experts and to someone who was actually here on the night that it happened. Jenny Randalls is one UFO investigator who's looked extensively at this story of Rendlesham Forest. So, exactly what did happen on that night in December 1980? Over a weekend in late December 1980, strange things fell down from the sky and um, they were tracked on at least three different radar systems across East Anglia. They were seen by civilian witnesses all along the route as they headed towards Rendlesham Forest, which is a pine wood eight miles east of Ipswich. Uh, they were also seen by a military patrol outside the NATO air bases of Bent Waters and Woodbridge. Uh, they were then given permission to go out and investigate what they assumed was an object that had crashed into the forest. When the two officers got there, they encountered uh, a conical shaped object which was hovering very close to ground level, uh, giving off an extremely strange kind of radiation, which meant that as they tried to close in on it, they found it almost impossible. It was as if they were walking through a barrier like treacle and time and space were completely disorientated in direct connection with this object. Uh, it was as if it was literally distorting the local time frame of the area. Physical evidence was also left behind, a huge hole in the top of the pine trees where something very heavy had come down, indentations in a triangle formation inside the ground underneath the trees, burn marks on the side of the trees, and radiation levels, uh, which were approximately five, six, seven times the normal background count, were left in the area immediately afterwards. You're left, I think, drawn to the conclusion that one of two things happened. Either this is some fantastic natural phenomenon so rare that it's probably never been reported before or since and which is capable of literally causing hallucinations or else it is what the witnesses themselves believe it was and that it was some intrusion from some other reality not necessarily another planet but possibly another dimension because whatever it was was controlling time and space in the local area on the other hand there are some reasons to believe that um, it's connected with strange experiments that have been going on in the area. We know an awful lot about this location in terms of the actual research that the government were up to, both the British and the American government, which they didn't want to tell anybody about. That includes something that was sort of euphemistically called over-the-horizon radar that they were testing on Orford Ness, which we know in fact was something which was being developed out of experiments first initiated by Marconi and Tesla earlier on in this century to perfect what was called kind of death beam uh, some kind of radiation energy which was capable of stalling car engines, switching off uh, tanks, 
or hence its military purpose, but as a side effect seemed to stun the neural network of people who got in the way, causing them to literally lose consciousness and in some extreme cases potentially to die as a result of the radiation that was emitted. It's not inconceivable that some experiments of that kind were being developed in this area. Local man Roy Wilkinson was in the area on the night of the incident. He actually drove his car right up to the base and was arrested. What does he recall of the events that happened on that particular night? Well, it, it seems that what happened here happened over a period of two or three days. I don't, I don't think I came on the first day, I think I came on the second day, second evening. That was like 12 o'clock at night when I got here. I got down there in the car just before this, them houses down there. And there's a lot of activity over here with uh, the military all over this place. The pickup trucks, there was lights and God knows what. This forest was, was uh, all the way to the road then because the trees had been blown down the hurricane. So it's pretty thick with trees, okay? And it's a through road to, to another village. So there was another car on the road, a Cortina at the time, was pulled over by the military. I jumped out my motor with my camera because I, was gonna, I thought I was going to get a shot or something that happened. I was told it was a UFO and stuff, okay? And um, the naivety of it was I didn't get very far because they just picked me up there. And you could see the lights over there through the trees because there was a lot of light. I don't know what it was mine, I think it was just the light holes or whatever you call them. Um, and they took me straight through this base, right, out the other end to Woodbridge Police Station. I thought I was going to get nicked, God knows what. Um, they just said, go away, and that was it. I think possibly there was a nuclear accident or something because in 1980 this was a nuclear arsenal and I don't I don't now believe there was a UFO uh, the Navy were out there I've talked to a lot of people since uh, HMS Norfolk was based out there it was called from Portsmouth out there there was a Russian submarine out there apparently technology has been in the sky for a long time they could have had something like that going on you know and it might have fell short of the runway it's quite possible that's the only avenue that I can think of I don't believe it was an unidentified flying object from God knows where although there are many eyewitness reports of strange lights in the sky on the night of the event and indeed many strange noises and lots of military personnel around some local people claim that they saw or heard nothing one local investigator brenda butler looked into this side of the story um well the ufo incident that was supposed to happen on december 1980 um, here in the woods behind us um it sort of ran its course i think I don't think anybody really know what happened. I don't think anybody ever really will. Uh, it all started by some security guards coming to the gate and seeing a light in the sky and shouting UFO, UFO. Um, after 16 years of investigations, yes, we did believe for the first few years that it was a UFO until other witnesses started coming in and giving us different stories. Um, people who live just a hundred yards from the forest, people who live right on the edge of the forest, if there was all the noise and the lights that were supposed to have happened and all the men there, they would have heard something. Um, there's one gentleman who's the cowman, he got up at three o'clock in the morning and the cows were still in the field, he didn't see anything, he got up, got his cows up, took them in for milking and he didn't see anything or hear anything. There was other people who've got a young baby and that used to get up at three o'clock in the morning to be fed and they didn't hear or see anything. Um, other witnesses who live in the village said um, that there wasn't anything happened. It seems the more you look for stories here at Rendlesham, the more you find them. One of the intriguing areas here is that on the night of the event it said a large unmarked black military aircraft landed at the base, dispatching investigators who were looking into the whole incident. It's also said that an argument developed between the US and the UK military, causing a standoff. The local prison just a few miles away was apparently given notice of evacuation 24 hours before the event. Now, why would that have happened? Does that suggest that the military knew that an incident was going to take place? that a UFO was perhaps going to land, or that there was going to be some sort of disaster, the plot, as they say, thickens. <laughs>